Hey, so in today's review, we're going to be checking out the Jamaican chicken burger with spicy jerk sauce from McDonald's. Hey, what's happening people? Lissimba here, representing Black Food Club, where we inspire people to be adventurous with African and Caribbean food by sharing our meal with you so that we can all share stories, experience new cultures and make new friends. You're all invited. So just before we kick off the review, I thought it'd be interesting if I give a tiny bit of context so you understand why the timing of this particular burger may be of interest. So as you may or may not know, here in the UK, a popular chef by the name of Jamie Oliver recently got called out for cultural appropriation as he released a product called Jerk Rice. And if you're familiar with perhaps jerk seasoning or how jerk dishes are made, you'll know that there's no such thing as jerk rice. Perhaps you may marinate some form of meat in some jerk sauce. So you may marinate some chicken, um, you may marinate some pork, fish, anything like that. And I'm not against being creative with food, um, but there's perhaps something a little bit off center with creating a jerk rice. Personally, I'm gonna be reserving judgment on the jerk rice until I get a chance to review it on this show. So with all the hysteria floating around regarding Jamie's rice, it raised a few eyebrows when McDonald's decided to release a Jamaican chicken burger. Now, the interesting thing which McDonald's did was smart, which Jamie didn't do, is the chicken burger had spicy jerk sauce, as opposed to Jamie's rice, which was jerk rice, not rice with a hint of jerk flavor or rice with a jerk sauce. The rice itself was jerked. To be transparent, the timing of this video is a little late for which I apologize. They have actually withdrawn this product from the shelf, but I just still wanted to share my experience with you. So just before we get into the review, I'm gonna sidetrack for just one second because I wanna bring up a talk by Malcolm Gladwell on spaghetti sauces. If you haven't seen it, um, it's available on YouTube. Um, it's a TEDx talk and I highly recommend it. So in a nutshell, and I am paraphrasing here, in the efforts to find the perfect sauce, it was actually found there's no perfect sauce, but there's perfect sauces, i.e. some people may like spicy sauce, some people may like sauce with chunky vegetables. Um, some people may like sauce with very salty, basically different kinds of sauces. And the reason why I bring that up is because anybody perhaps concerned that McDonald's is following the Jamie Oliver bandwagon, uh, if you like, if they feel that he may be doing cultural appropriation, I don't think that's what they're doing. McDonald's have been well known over the years for bringing out different themed burgers uh, from different parts of the world. What we saw, for example, when Disney brought out the film Mulan, McDonald's released a burger that complemented China with Szechuan sauce. So while I'm touching on the business practices of McDonald's, I highly recommend this book, McDonald's Behind the Arches by John F. Love. So it's a book that tells the tale of how McDonald's came to be um, from what it was. And one thing I guess is at the core of what McDonald's do is consistency. And that speaks volumes about why I personally go to McDonald's. Now, if I'm honest, I don't go to McDonald's for how amazingly good the food tastes. There's certain times where I know it's gonna be okay. Um, it's definitely not gourmet, but they manage my expectations and that it's so consistent. Sometimes when you're mad hungry, you really want something to eat, you just wanna know that it's gonna taste half decent or as good as you had it last time. The last thing you wanna do is go get something to eat and it wasn't as good as you remember. So the thing about McDonald's is you manage your expectations. So in me trying this burger, I wasn't expecting the world, I was just expecting a decent burger, hopefully with some decent sauce. So how did it actually taste? So in terms of taste, I'm actually gonna give this burger a three. I was pleasantly surprised how this burger tasted. The bun was soft, the chicken was the right amount of crisp, and the sauce 
me personally, I can't lie. I thought there was a nice hint of jerk. Now, before any diehard jerk fans hit me up in the comments, I know that perhaps it's not authentic jerk. I know that it's not traditional jerk, but that's why I brought up everything else before because I was managing my expectations. When you go to McDonald's for a burger with jerk sauce, you're managing your expectations and that perhaps allowed me to be a bit more open-minded. So I was pleasantly surprised in that I was actually expecting the worst and I felt that they did a good job. Not amazing, it wasn't a gourmet chicken, um, but it was definitely a good solid burger. I'd actually recommend it. You can't actually buy it now, but hopefully maybe, I don't know, it may come again. Carnival's around the corner, you never know. So briefly, I'm gonna to touch on the fries. They're not the core of this review, but perhaps if you've never had McDonald's fries before, I just tell you they're very Moorish. Like you can just eat and eat and eat. They're very, 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 very tasty. Um, one thing I will say, make sure you eat them while they're hot. You don't want them to go cold. Once they go very cold, they, I think they taste like cardboard. They're just not nice cold. They're not something you can reheat, like eat it like there and then. So in today's review, I'm not gonna be talking about the ambience because I actually got a takeaway or as our friends across the pond like to call it a takeout. So on presentation, I'm gonna be giving them three stars out of five. I feel with these kinds of establishments, the one thing you're always concerned about is does the food actually look like the picture? So if you weren't aware of the tricks of the trade when it comes to food photography, a little search on YouTube will show you all kinds of little things they do to make food look tasty. Uh, includes maybe paint, um, using glue. I'm not saying that's what they use in this picture, but I'm just basically saying sometimes what you see in the picture is not what you necessarily get as a dish when it's served. On this occasion, I don't feel that they did a bad job. I don't, I don't feel it was um, too dissimilar from the picture. Um, I feel that the presentation of it was still quite appetite, appet appetizing. Yeah, I feel it still looked very appetizing. The one remark that I will make is that the salad looked extremely limp, like the salad was dead. The, the, it didn't, I'll be honest, it didn't really affect the taste too much, but as you can see, that, that salad just like, I should have thrown it out, I should take, well, I had to do the review, but the salad left room for improvement. So thanks for watching today's review. Please let me know what you'd like me to check out next. And don't forget with the Black Food Club, you're invited. In the next episode, we check out Kate's Cafe, a Ghanaian restaurant in East London.